track mats don't have to be static. You can put them in motion. I'm going to show you how to do that in this lesson. To follow along, go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, and then start up 1102 Animate Mats. We have two comps here. This first one, we're going to animate the mat, and then we're going to animate the layer. You can animate both. The second one, we're going to animate the mat by scaling it up so it seems to even explode faster than normal. So let's go back to this first one. Let's first of all just set up this track mat. We've got some text on the top layer. That's the mat. And we've got the solid layer down below, which is an animated background that I got from an animated preset over in the Effects and Presets panel. Let's just take a quick look at this guy. You can see that the background animates there. The background animation is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about actually putting the entire layer in motion. So let's just make the track mat. We're going to go over here and choose the alpha mat because text has an alpha channel in it. So there you go. And now we're seeing what we would expect to see. Where the text is opaque, that's what you see in the solid layer. Where the text layer was transparent, then you don't see that in the solid layer. And we're seeing through to the background. There's no layer below here that we can use as a backdrop. If we turned on the background, that would be kind of the artificial background. But truly, we have no background behind here. Okay. Now what we can do is we can put the mat in motion, put the text in motion. So I'm going to open up position for the text by pressing the P key. I'm going to take this guy to the right little ways. There we go. And keyframe that. And then go in a little bit, a couple seconds, and slide him to the left by holding down the shift key and dragging the X value there. And now we've animated the text. We've animated the mat itself, which is, as you can see, pretty darn easy to do. And obviously just sliding it to the left like that is a basic thing to do. You can make it much more complex. You could start small, make it large, whatever. But you can animate the mat that way. And now I want to animate the layer on which the mat is applied. So I'm going to change the background to something else because this background is already full screen. I'd rather have something that's larger than full screen. So I've got this yellow-black gradient that I made inside Photoshop. Looks like that. So we're going to bring that in. Let me close the footage panel here. I'll drag it down above that solid there. And we'll turn off this track mat, even though it's not affecting it anymore, and turn on the text again. There you go. So we're going to make the text serve as the mat to this background. Now this mat to this yellow black gradient. So to do that, I quite simply just go over here again and just click on alpha mat again. There you go. And now you see the solid background that we put down below there. I could turn that off for a second, turn it back on. What we have is this glow. It's kind of cool. You can put that in motion. So I'm going to open up that layer by pressing the P key, keyframe position like that. Maybe slide it just a little bit to the right till I get to the edge of that gradient. There we go. There's the edge of it there. Now I'll go a little bit farther in. I can slide it to the left. So here I'm basically animating the layer on which the mat is applied. So it gives it this kind of glow. It's a glow that's moving slowly because we have to do a little RAM preview, but you get a sense of how that works. I want to show you something else here. I'm going to reverse things a little bit. I'm going to take away this little guy here. I'm going to go back to the original one. Turn this layer back on so you can see it. If I switch this to alpha, it looked like that, remember? Let's change positions here. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to put the solid on top and let that serve as the mat, and then have the text be the layer to which the mat is applied. So now we have a solid which does not have transparency, so I'm not going to choose alpha here. I'm going to choose luma. Wherever it's light in the solid, you get to see the text. Wherever it's dark, you can barely see it. And boy, that's not much, right? You can barely see the text there. You need something behind it. Well, you can use the original solid as a backdrop to this. It's kind of interesting. So I'm going to take this guy and duplicate it, Control or Command D to duplicate it. There's a duplicated version there. I'm going to drag it to the bottom, turn on its eyeball, and it's obviously going to make it almost disappear here. What I can do now, though, is I can use a blending mode with this text. Click on the blending mode here and make it a little bit darker by going, let's say, multiply, perhaps. This makes it a little bit darker to do it that way. Let's try classic color burn. There you go. You can use the original layer that you used as the mat, and you can put that down as a backdrop. And then if you want to change the color of this a little bit or the characteristic of a little bit, you can. And what's going to happen is that the animation that's going on inside this layer, this motion that's built into it, is equal to what's going on inside the text because those two layers are working in concert with each other, which is pretty cool that you can do that. Just keep in mind that you can change the color. So for example, down here in the effects, I've got something called tritone. If I change the color a little bit, then you can see that it's going to be different than the original color on the blue there on top. See that works? There you go. So sometimes you can use the mat as a background for the entire animation. All right, let's go to the scale mat thing. This one's set up pretty well already, but I just want to make a couple of changes to it. We have here is a text mat. 
And then the layer is the flames. And then we've got a background here that we can't see right yet, but we will in a moment. So what I want to do is just turn on the track mat. And since the text is going to be the mat, we can use the alpha version, alpha mat. There you go. And now the flames actually kind of wipe on the text like that, which is kind of cool. But what I want to do instead is have the flames come up from the bottom instead of from the side. So they kind of do the text from here and then go on up. So let me turn off that mat, turn on the eyeball for the top track again so we can see what we're doing. Then we're going to work on this clip here. So I'm going to press the P key for position and then shift R for rotation and shift S for scale. Those are the three guys we're going to work on here. First of all, I want to rotate it. I want to rotate it minus 90 degrees or plus 270. So I'll go minus 90. There we go. Now it's got the bottom there. Let me pull it up. So I'm just going to grab it here and just pull it up like so. I'm going to take the anchor point and move it down to the bottom because I want it to grow from the bottom. So I'm going to grab the pan behind tool here and move the anchor point down there. That'll be set up. We don't need to keyframe the anchor point. We're just setting the anchor point there at the bottom. It makes it easier to animate this guy. Let's spread them out a little bit. I want them to go across the bottom of the screen at the beginning. So I'm going to unlink scale and just drag this guy to the right like that. I'm going to go back to the regular selection tool and there we go. Okay, we got him as wide as the screen there more or less. And that's kind of our starting point. What I want to do is I want to have the flame kind of expand dramatically and quickly. So I'm going to set a keyframe for scale right here at the beginning. And then we're going to kind of blow things up a little bit. We might need to change position, but we'll just see how this works here. Have it go up like that. And then when it gets to about this time here, I want him to be much larger. So I'm going to increase the scale. I want to increase the scale going up. So it's kind of hard because he turned it. Which one's up, right? Turns out the X value is up because we rotated it. So there you go. We're going to Make it like that. Maybe scale them to the right a little bit too. And then we're going to change the position a little bit. So I do need to keyframe that. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Turn on keyframes for position. Go back over here. And now I'm going to change the position to kind of match the flame that would come in so it really gets on the text in a large way there. And that should be about right. So we're making the flames come on faster here. We're animating that layer to have a different effect to make sure the flames behave more quickly. So let's just close things down here and let's make the track mat again by going over here. We're going to make an alpha mat again because the text has transparency. And let's just play this guy and see what happens. I'm going to drag in here, kind of speed things up, and there it goes. It reveals it from the bottom. And if I were to be able to play this and RAM preview for it really quickly, you'd see that that flame comes on faster and goes quickly across the width of the entire layer. So there you go. I think it's clear now that track mats don't have to be static. You can animate their position, their rotation, even their scale.